Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Amy Man. Look, I know. I know. It's only like five seconds into this video, but I can already tell there are a number of you motherfuckers who probably looked at the title of this video and are already down at the comments typing shit up like, Oh my god, Joey, we get it. The anime industry is dying. whoop de fucking do Can you stop talking about this shit for God's sake and maybe talk about more important things in the anime community? Like, like, like look at this penguin who fell in love with this anime girl. Isn't, isn't that fucking kawaii, Desu? Like, what the fuck do you want me to say about a penguin falling in love with an anime girl at a, at a Japanese zoo. It's, 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 it's cute. All right, thanks for watching. Smash that like button for more quality anime rants. Johnny. Okay, look, I won't lie, it's pretty damn adorable, but can we just move on? Yes, it is true that I've done many, many videos on this channel talking about the supposed imminent death of the anime industry. The apocalypse is upon us and we must unite together, fellow otakus. The Owari is nigh. But I think this is something that is still important to keep discussing about because it doesn't just revolve around one anime, it revolves around all anime. I think discussing the future of the anime industry gives us a pretty good indication of what's to come. And a good way to discuss what is supposedly the root of all problems in terms of modern anime. With that said, I recently was on the interwebs and saw a particular interview that was done on a woman called Kotani Kyoko, who is a longtime animation director and key animator for a lot of well-known anime, including Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Durarara, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, among many, many others. And in this interview, she opens up to experiences working in an industry that has seen a lot of strain and a lot of pressure and surprisingly a lot of weird changes. One factor about the anime industry that she accentuates a number of times is that this shit's getting hard, yo. With the ever-growing demand for more and more anime with less and less animators working on more and more anime, she's starting to see that more and more episodes of anime, especially in recent years, are getting delayed a lot more for what is otherwise quite easily avoidable situations. Apparently, this didn't happen as much back when she was working in the industry a while ago, saying, quote, For who knows how long anime has been delivered the day before or the day of airing. I think there are even some production companies where cutting it close is the norm. One thing about this story that particularly caught my eye was the Go Boyano article of this particular story, which showed a flowchart of how anime is created. In this chart, the light blue steps that you see involve the animators in some way, while the rest of the steps involve the other members of the team, including the director, the producer, the editor, and the character designers. Kotain explains that unlike a lot of other creation flowcharts, the anime production flowchart is streamlined. In other in other words, if one step out of the many steps on this flowchart get blocked up, then everything else also gets blocked up along with it. And the ever-growing demand of more anime with better quality is certainly not helping this flowchart run along any smoothly. Kotani also blames the fact that a lot of animators working on your favourite anime series are that of freelancers. In other words, they're working on multiple series at once. And that that's probably the best reasoning when explaining, say, one episode of your favourite anime having a completely different art style to the next episode of the same anime. She says that there isn't really enough time to kind of train, especially the new animators that are coming into the industry every day. And that because the demand for more anime is so high and they're already understaffed as it is, there just isn't enough time to cultivate the talents of these new animators. But one surprising and less depressing fact about the changes in the anime industry is that there seems to be a lot more female animators than there has ever been before. Kotani is saying that some students studios in fact have an 8 to 2 ratio of female to male animators. And that according to some surveys, middle school female students place animators and mangakas in their top two job interests. Which looking at it from a Japanese cultural perspective is actually fantastic. It's awesome to see that more and more younger women are starting to think more about their own careers and their own place in the work industry. Especially considering that Japan is unfortunately a culture that is rooted on the whole male goes to work and the female is a housewife kind of mentality. But that certainly doesn't make this change any kind of silver lining, especially when, regardless of if you're a male animator or a female animator, you are still struggling with the shitstorm that the anime industry is under. So, we know that the anime industry is in a huge fucking pinch for a number of reasons, but the important question that I'm sure we all want to know the answer to is, 
how do we fix it? Now, I don't even have to dive into the comments of this video to kind of figure out your answer to this question, since most likely your answer is probably the most logical answer and is similar to that of Kotani's answer. Make less anime. Quality over quantity. Less is more. I mean, it's a logical answer. By making less anime, the industry has enough time to create more higher quality anime, which in turn fulfills the satisfaction of otakus all over the world who want more higher quality anime. Because that's one thing that myself and many others in the community are unfortunately seeing when it comes to opinions on modern anime. Whatever opinion you may have on modern anime, it is clearly evident that there are a lot of negative voices shining out among the positive reviews. Now, while this may seem like a logical answer, the more I thought about it, the more I started to see that this isn't actually a solution at all. In fact, by using this answer to solve the problem, I actually think it might make modern anime even more shittier. Because unfortunately, life is not that simple, and at the end of the day, the anime industry is a business. In modern anime, say within the last five years or so especially, we're treated to about 30 to 50 series per season. Which if you think about it, is fucking insane. That's anywhere between 120 to 200 series every year. Not even the biggest weebs in the world have enough time to sit down and watch every single series that has ever been aired per year. And this is coming from a guy who sits in his room and watches anime for a living. But maybe the reason why there is so much anime per season is to not give us more anime to watch, but rather more variety of anime to watch. Out of those 120 to 200 series per year, we're treated to literally every kind of anime. From your shonen stuff, to your sequels, prequels, light novel adaptations, kids shows, 3D CG series, anime originals, OVAs, ONAs, and everything else from your general harem edgy stuff to your unique horror and psychological cyberpunks. There's at least one series every year that fits into some kind of already established niche of a genre. Which is great, especially if you're one of those casual anime viewers who just wants to pick and choose what they want to watch, or has a particular taste of anime or type of genre of anime which they would prefer. Not really great for people like us who have to sit down and dedicate anywhere from a thousand to two thousand hours every single year to watch a bunch of series that are so shit that they won't even be left in our memory bank by the end of the year. Yeah, I'm certainly not making this the most desirable job in the world, am I? But say hypothetically the anime industry does answer our prayers and in order to pursue quality of anime, they decide to say cut the amount of series that they make every season by half. From a ridiculous 30 to 50 series per season to a little bit more reasonable 15 to 25 series per season. I say hypothetically because here's the problem. It just doesn't make sense for the anime industry to do that. Because at the end of the day, the anime industry is a business, and in order to make money for that business, they have to sell things that they know their consumers are going to enjoy and buy. They have to look at the larger majority of their audience and be like, what kind of stuff does this larger majority enjoy from us? And guess what the majority of the modern anime community in Japan enjoys? That's right. Your shitty, terrible, monotonous bullshit of an anime. And that's the biggest problem with this solution. Less anime means less variety of anime as well. If the anime industry does decide to make less anime, then they're just going to focus their attention on anime that they know is going to do well and sell a shit ton of. Which means that there's going to be less risk taking when it comes to different and new types of anime that don't fit the current trend. Which means there's actually going to be less quality quality and less originality and less unique shows per season. Each season is basically going to comprise of say two to four idol anime, maybe like one obligatory Gundam spin-off, three to five Moe Blob types of cutesy cute girls doing cute things type of anime, three to five say full 3D CG shows because they're way less cost effective, a bunch of sequels and prequels and spin-offs of already popular mainstream series, and maybe, just maybe, there's like one or two originals and unique ideas for an anime or like totally niche and unique genres of anime that are usually the ones that people consider when they talk about 
quality in anime. Which if you ask me already, without even looking at what titles there are gonna be, sounds like a pretty shitty and lackluster season of anime. But that's unfortunately the gravity and the reality of this situation. When we say we want to see high quality anime, we're talking about those anime that we saw 10 to 20 years ago, the ones that were different, the ones that started something new. But with the current climate of the average anime consumer in Japan, the current trend is to unfortunately make these seemingly boring and unoriginal shows for a lot of people. Because whether you're a fan of those type of shows or not, those are the shows that at the end of the day, sell. Check this out for example, this is a list of the top 30 highest selling franchises from the anime industry in 2016 according to Japan's Oregon charts. The numbers you see are the collective sales from that franchise including DVDs, Blu-rays, music CDs and any type of merchandise. And just check out some of the franchises that make the top of this list. Love Life, One Piece, Osomatsukun, Idol Master, Mobile Suit Gundam, Girls and Panzer. It's not until we get near the bottom of the list where we see what was otherwise known as the popular new shows of 2016, like Bungo Stray Dogs and Erased. Even though they were considered these huge phenomenon and these huge new shows back in 2016, the reality is, is that they don't even come close to competing with the top Idol and Moe Blob shows of that year. And that's I think the other problem about the whole situation is that the anime industry just does not give two shits about us, the international anime community, and what we want to see from anime. If only they did that then maybe they would stop making these shitty Idol and Moe Blob shows that nobody in the West gives two shits about. I mean, I'm not saying that shows like Bungo Stray Dogs and Erased were exactly the most top tier of quality in 2016, but compared to the other shows at the top of this Oricon list, it certainly shines through as higher quality. It's evident that the anime industry is changing in more ways than one, for better or worse, but the reality is, is that the future of the industry looks, so far, pretty freaking grim. We've explored the possible reason as to why the anime industry doesn't just cut the number of anime series that they make per season in order to up the quality of new anime. So we're back to the beginning. How do we fix this problem? Personally, the only solution I can see to this problem is to somehow show the anime industry that we want newer, different, unique, more original shows rather than the same bullshit monotonous shows that are supposedly bringing the quality of modern anime down. At the end of the day, this whole idol and moe blob anime trend is exactly that just a trend. Once the trend starts dying down or a new trend starts to take over its place, whichever comes first, then the anime industry is inevitably gonna have to change their ways to fit in with that trend. And as you dank as fuck internet meme dwellers know best, the way that a trend starts is people. In order to get a new trend rolling in the anime community, us, members of the anime community, need to start it. If you want to see the anime industry making more unique and creative and original shows, then we have to start supporting those kinds of unique, creative and original shows. Sure, it might be a little bit difficult and I might just be spewing out of my utopian ass about let's change the future of the anime industry together, but hey, it's a start. Using sites like crunchyroll.com slash anime man, nailed it is a simple yet surefire way as it directly relates back to the anime industry and directly supports the anime industry. And again, buying DVDs, Blu-rays and merchandise of your favorite unique original shows from legal sources is definitely a good way to get that message out. So I think changing the anime industry from the perspective where the anime industry doesn't give a shit isn't entirely impossible. It's not that the anime industry isn't listening, we just need to start shouting a little bit louder so they can hear us. Guys, let me know what you think about this. What do you think about the current work environment of the anime industry as Kortani explains in the interview? What are some ways we can stop the anime industry from ultimately crashing and burning like a terrible car crash? And what kind of series do you personally want to see more of coming from the anime industry in the future? I for one love my horror and psychological and cyberpunk kind of shows, so I would love to see more of those kinds of shows. I personally don't mind some of the slice of life stuff and some of the etchy stuff, but I think they have to tone it down just a little bit to make room for some actually good stories. But hey, that's just me, and I want to hear your opinion, so let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments below. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you.